Hi, uh, nice to meet all of you. I'm Victor from the Carousel team. Uh, I want to give special thanks to the Google Cloud community for inviting us here. And uh, I think like what, echoing what John said earlier, uh, we're very honored to be able to share uh, our story, or rather my mistakes uh, with all of you here today. I see a few familiar faces from my office around here, so don't laugh at me when you go back tomorrow. Uh, but I think down the line, uh, more of you, as more of you use Google Cloud, I think there'll be opportunities for you to come up here and share. And I'll be really happy to be one of the members in the audience hearing your story because uh, everyone will go through the same, uh, a different route. Uh, that's why we're in startups. We are going through the same kind of difficulties, but uh, very, I, I like to hear about more stories. And uh, today I'm sharing mine, and next time I want to be hearing yours. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you today is about actually a lot of our early uh, journeys on the cloud, and they may or may not be on Google Cloud. Uh, it's not a sales pitch. I'm telling you more about the mistakes I've made early days and uh, some of the things that we're doing now. Uh, so hopefully you can take back a couple of lessons and uh, apply them depending on which stage of the startup where you are right now. Right. So a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm the first employee to join Carousel. So apart from the three founders, I'm the first person to join them. And since then I've taken up part-time roles, full-time roles, uh, more on the engineering side and gradually moved to management. And now I'm the interim head of engineering. So I have to look after the whole uh, engineering team at Carousel. And today, the things I'm sharing will be uh, great, uh, used to be decisions. Uh, now, in retrospect, mistakes that I'll be sharing. And I can share them all I want because at that point, I was the only backend engineer. So everything I share is my own mistake. So no one will get offended by this. Right, so I'll cover a couple of things first. First, I'll give a very quick uh, history and timeline of us on the cloud uh, before I sort of dive into the lessons and the stuff that we've learned over time. Right, so I think back in 2012, 2013, and 2012 was when uh, Carousel first started out as a company, as a startup. Uh, everything was hosted on a single instance on the cloud. Right, so when I joined them, I went in, I asked like, where are the servers? There, was, there were no servers, there was a server. Right. Uh, it was on the cloud, but everything was inside. Right. And the best part was that I found out that development and hosting were all done on the same machine. Right. So this is pretty much the whole ship your laptop to the cloud and that's running production sort of mentality right there. Right. Uh, and that was a lot of fun, right? going in, finding out why uh, you're not, your, your app has uh, trouble meeting the needs of your users only to find out about this. And before you can even get started out coding anything, you need to fix a, a lot of things. So I pretty much spent the whole uh, 2013 summer moving things out bit by bit. And uh, since then, we started to use the cloud proper, as I will call it. Uh, so we, we were on cheaper hosting providers. We did not have any funding at the time. Options were limited. And uh, so in, you know, in the name of cost, in the name of price saving, we moved to a cheaper cloud providers. And, uh, but I think regardless of where we were at that time, in terms of mindset and mentality, where we were was that we were using the cloud like VPS providers, right? like last generation. They were just machines and we were just deploying there. We had no, no concept of that, the very fact that we were on the cloud now. To us, it was the same thing. And our architecture at that time was very simple. right? Like If you look at this, this is pretty much how things were at the era. And there was no concept of containers. You don't hear of anything about like that. Right, so it was a very simple, you had a load uh, balancing layer, you had your application servers, you had your databases, that, that was it. That was us at that period of time, back in 2013, 2014. Right. And in 2015, 2016, when we started scaling and growing, that's when we really hit a lot of issues. Right. You wanted to grow, you wanted to scale, but you were experiencing all the issues that you had on the cloud. And if you were on you know, like what we call the lower cost providers, Things like noisy neighbors, network issues, shouldn't be a stranger to you, right? Uh, I didn't even know that there was such a term called noisy, noisy neighbors until I went to research. Why, at unknown periods of time, my server that's performing fine would just become slow, right? And uh, depending on who, which provider we were at, sometimes we will get hit by what we call random reboots. So you will only know that after the fact because they will email you and tell you that we had to reboot the instance 10 minutes after they have rebooted it. So on your metrics, you'll be like, what the? And then after that, they'll tell you, I'm sorry, we messed up. And uh, at, at best, right, like at the best when we were growing rapidly, like 10 reboots in three days is too, way too much excitement for anyone. 
and I don't wish this on anyone else. Uh, the, the, the best part was that at that time, I was the only one managing on the servers. So even when I had to go for overseas trip, holidays, you could never sleep in peace. Even when, at that time, I had nightmares about my servers crashing. So um, I think back in uh, 2016, 2017, that was when we did a benchmark on Google Cloud. I think we were really blown away by the performance to price uh, ratio. And, uh, and then we started taking plans. We, we, talk, we went to talk with them, talked to our partners at GCP. Uh, we planned for migration. And the whole thing took more than two months, actually, you know, from the first conversations. But in terms of planning, in terms of execution, that took two months, from June, uh, from the start of June all the way to the end of July. And at that time, I think we, we tried our best to do a one-to-one -one migration. That means we are not re-architecting our app at that point. We just moved our VPS concept over and deal with that later. I'll share why we had to do this uh, as I go on. Right, so this is us in a very brief sort of uh, history and timeline sort of concept. Now, I think we use a lot more uh, GCP services. So we use Compute Engine, App Engine, and the rest you can read yourself. Uh, and right now, our entire data infrastructure uh, is possible because we are using GCP, uh, Google services. And we try to move all our legacy VMs to containers whenever possible. And that's the direction that we see ourselves going forward. So now I'll talk about the lessons that we've learned. Uh, three main ones, very simple, uh, nothing mind-blowing. I'm not selling you any magical solutions here. Uh, but these are very simple things that anyone can take away. Right. The, the first thing here is, if you're designing and building something now, design and build it with the cloud in mind. Like, don't be like us. Like, when I first came out, I designed it like VPS services because that was the mindset and, uh, and what I had in mind. Right. The cost to change a cloud provider or change your architecture increases dramatically as you grow. For us, the worst thing was that we were hit by all these issues when we were growing rapidly. And that was like we were talking about huge percentage of growth uh, week on week, quarter on quarter, month on month, year on year. And when your architecture and your services can't keep up with you, you're going to be in much, uh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. For us, it took two months. Um, for if you're an early stage startup, you have your first funding. If you re-architect, that could take you days at that point. Uh, days is much better than months or even quarters down the line because speed is of essence, uh, essence for startups. Adopting new technologies now, uh, this is ThoughtWorks uh, technology radar, and you should see that Kubernetes is right there, right? Adopt. Right? There are a couple of more bleeding edge technology over there. Uh, for some reason, GCP is under trial, uh, but I think they should be under adopt. These are things that you should keep, uh, make sure that you're aware of. You know, don't be building your tech on uh, last generations of tools. And in terms of architecture and design, keep the modern ones in mind. Right? I can blame myself because I was a fresh graduate. I came out of school. Uh, that was all I knew. Uh, but for the rest of you, I think this is a great time. And you know, like if you're building something from scratch, start from the modern tooling. Right? There's no need to be bleeding edge. You don't have to try out the new thing that came out on maybe Hacker News last week. But there are things like Kubernetes who have been around for a long time. O active open source community, use them. Right? Docker is another example. Right? And for early stage startups, figuring things like this, getting it to production, it takes you one to two days at most. For us, trying to re-architect a scaling app and one that you can't you know, stop and just say, oh, I'm going to take a one day downtime to migrate, it was very expensive. Right, and a uh, couple of my, our engineers had to do that planning and migration, and every time they had blockers, I just think to myself, wow, shit, I'm the one who got them into this mess. And you don't want to be in that position when you're growing. Second lesson, right, you are trying to build, uh, you, you want to make sure that your hosting platform can scale with you. The only thing that should be scaling when you're building a startup is your own startup. Don't choose partners that have to scale with you. And this was a very, very expensive lesson for us. Right. So we built Carousel on top of um, hosting providers. They didn't have any what we call quality of life improvements things. Right. So all they offered you were instances, like how you would use VPS servers. And that was all. No load balancing, no nothing, no, email, uh, no storage solutions. All you had were instances, and you had to use them to scale. 
I lost count of the number of times where we were looking at uh, other solutions and we were like, to be able to do something, we'll have to ship, we'll have to maintain this entire service by ourselves, right? And uh, at that point when it was just mainly me alone as a backend engineer, trying to take on more things, trying to build more services, uh, didn't seem like the best choice, All right? And the hosting provider, they were also a startup and they were scaling with us. Scaling with us means they had their own scaling challenges. I don't know what was more exciting than knowing that, okay, I have a service downtime. Let me go to the console and reboot it. But their console was down because they have bugs or they have serve, uh, hosting issues on their own. I don't know what went through my mind at that point. Like uh, if I had a partner like this, shouldn't I just switch at that time? Uh, in retrospect, yes. Uh, but I don't know what I was thinking at that time. Right. Too busy trying to uh, fight fire every day that I don't have time to plan ahead. So if you look at pros and cons of why we were on this hosting provider, uh, very simple billing was what they advertised and uh, it was very easy for us to do our financials, uh, but everything else we uh, had nothing. Right? Like in terms of instant size, forget about customizations. This is all we have, use them. If, you, if you're gonna exit, uh, what they'll tell you is, I will try and accommodate, but uh, it will take us a few days or weeks to give you a dedicated instance that could do something like that. Right? And uh, of course, the last one, random reboots, uh, very nice of them. Uh, if you ask them to give you a, tell you why, they'll just tell you, we had hardware issues, you, we had to reboot the instance. That's it, good luck. Right? And when I say we need to reinvent the wheel, that means it, load balancing, right? like it's a soft problem if you're using the cloud, uh, most of the hosting providers these days. They had none of that. So we had to build our own layers, we had to build our own routing solutions, you know, optimize it for ourselves. Zero helpful services, same thing, right? Like most of the things you take for granted these days, none. They just give you servers, build everything by yourself. Right? I know there are some people who love that, like being able to do everything by yourself. But when you're scaling, when you're growing and having to do that by yourself, is probably not the best thing ever. Costs will and always be the biggest consideration for startups, even if you have funding or if you, if you are bootstrapping and you don't have uh, money in hand, right? I think what John shared earlier was that, you know, that if you're a startup, before five years old, you can get funding, uh, you can get credits and stuff. But at that time, like that, we, we didn't have all these options. And so we had to spend our own time, we have to trade our own time, you know, to, to get something that's cheaper, right? Time and cost will always be a trade-off that you have to manage. But there will come a point in time where you need to think about the savings down the line, right? If, at back in like maybe say 2013, 2014, if I took some time out to plan, to re-architect, that would have meant compounded savings down the line. Uh, and it's very hard to tell uh, other people in your company that you know, we need to get this thing done, we need to build this and ship this, and you tell them, no, we can't do it because the server is not gonna be able to keep, keep up. And that's a position you never wanna put yourself in. And the last one, I uh, hope, I'm not doing too fast on time, is that you should plan for how you scale, right? What sort of scalability do you need for your architecture, for your design, right? This is up to you. This is, this is up to how you want to plan and build it, right? Do you need a data pipeline, right? Does your startup need to have, you know, are you using a machine learning framework? Do you need to build things that are scalable? I think, think about those, like for, for the longest time, we didn't have our own uh, internal data pipeline. We relied on external services. And when we had to build them, that was a very tricky thing. Like, do you want to be using your own, uh, do, you want to, do we want to build our own, all the data layers again? A data framework, data tooling, or do we want to use our services and save us the time, right? Thinking about how each part of this will scale is very important and very critical. And when we were so busy fighting fire every day with every downtime and reboot, we just didn't have time to plan for this. <coughs> And I believe there are two domains of things you should want to focus on as a startup, right? Things you want to spend time on, it's a very limited, limited set of things. These are the things you want to get really good at. Your business, your growth playbook, uh, you know, what's your scaling strategy, maybe. Um, this are, it's not going to be a lot of things, right? Because you just want to make sure that you focus on a couple of things and you do them well. And there's going to be a large pool of things that you don't want to do, right? And for us at Carousel, I think early days, I think we spend too much time on things that we don't want to spend, we shouldn't have spent our time on, 
right? and uh, as a result, uh, we didn't manage to hit the when 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 growth came, right? Uh, we didn't manage to hit everything, and a lot of things had to go in order for us to scale our architecture up to meet uh, our growth needs. Right. So what were some of the things I was spending uh, my time on? When it was peak hour, I would, sometimes I would say, okay, let's spin up a couple more servers and just to be sure. Right. In this age and time, if anyone tells you that they're doing this, you'll be laughing at them. But at that time, we were so busy that we didn't think about how ridiculous this sounded. We don't plan on uh, how to scale. So that means every day, whenever incidents happen, we'll be too busy fighting them. And once you're done fighting them at night, you just like, okay, I'm too tired for this. I'm going to sleep. And then the next day, the same thing happens over and over again. When you try to do all these things by yourself, like maybe you made some decision that I, I want to manage this myself, I want to manage that myself, and you only have a limited set of people and time, you're not going to do them well. Right? Try to juggle five balls versus two. Which one is easier? And uh, for, for me, when I look back, like, shit, man, this is where I spent all my time on. And if I did, you know, just say, guys, give me one week. Let me sort things out. Things would have been a lot better. So a lot of uh, negative stuff. So let me talk about something more positive right now today. Right, today we are on GCP, which is, should be of no surprise to anyone uh, coming here today. We use quite a bit of stuff, right? I talked about us. Um, most of our applications right now are running on Docker Kubernetes, save for a few things a few random scripts. I even have stuff running on App Engine that I don't know if anyone knows. I just snuck in my script there and just kept them running. Uh, for our data, uh, data team, they use a number of Google tools a lot. Uh, BigQuery, Cloud Dataflow, Cloud ML Engine. And we still have our own stuff that we built on top of uh, their Compute Engine, yes. But majority of these things that we are using, these are things that we don't have to worry about. So two months of migration that happened in 2016, and uh, I think last count, I had a, we had about approximately 500, over 500 Compute Engine instances running. Uh, and that's excluding containers. I don't count them. Like, uh, nobody counts them. A lot of our data and machine learning processing it happens on GCP. Right? So when we have new features that powers our new personalized home feed, things that you might like, all these are run from on there. And this whole platform powers uh, all the work of all our engineers at Carousel today. And, uh, we've moved over, and uh, we don't look back, and we don't regret. Some tips if you're in the same situation as us, in case you, uh, if you look at some of my points and you actually resonate with them, I think first thing is to take a break and uh, stop fighting on a fire, right? There's never a good time to do migration, right? Always tell yourself, tell yourself like, if today is a bad time, tomorrow will be a worse time. Just do it now. Yeah. And don't be like me. I don't want to hear someone sharing the same story as me down the line. Like, oh yeah, I didn't do it then. Uh, but that's what people like to hear. Uh, like, you know, like shit that they share about themselves. <laughs> right. And start using managed services, right? Like if you can, uh, if you think that it's uh, something that you can accept uh, with your technology team, do it, Sa use it, and save yourself the trouble down the line. I think the key thing here is to figure out what are the things you want to spend your time on. Right. If you are more focused on data, you want your data pipeline to be the best, then spend your time on that. Worry less about you know, the rest of your application hosting and all this. Right. We tried to do everything by ourselves. We couldn't do it well. Right. And uh, you have to look at the size of your team, how much funding you have, what kind of growth level you're at. Yeah. So I mean, maybe just take away that. Like, don't be like Victor from Carousel. Right? Don't try and do everything by yourself. Uh, that's a very, it was a very bad position to be in. And I'm fortunate enough that, you know, like uh, after almost five years of working with the team, they have not fired me yet. I'm still here able to share this story with all of you. Okay, yeah, that's actually it uh, for today's uh, sharing. I don't know if we have time or do we take questions? Yeah. Yes, anyone has any questions for Victor? Sure. Hi, so my name is Aaron. I work with uh, Golden Creator Consulting, which is a consulting firm in Singapore. So uh, uh, can you can you talk something about how you build your deployment pipeline? Is it over uh, Google Cloud or like do you use any other services for your deployment pipeline? Uh, uh, we're building it on Google Cloud. Okay. Yeah, uh, tooling-wise, uh, 
what most engineers see are uh, Jenkins when they're trying to deploy, uh, depending on what interface they use. Some of them want to deploy over uh, Slack and other stuff, uh, but everything is on Google Cloud. Any other questions? Okay, no questions. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for your time.